be like Heavenly Father. In Romans 8, Paul is talking about how we can become heirs of the kingdom of God. You know, he specifically says, and if children, you know, the Spirit tells you that we are children of God. The Spirit will, t the spirit will tell you that we are children of God. No, uh, the Spirit that speaks consistently with what he gave us in Scripture, Scriptures that he inspired and that he preserved um, and that that he directs our hearts to obedience to, that Spirit has told us that only by faith in Jesus Christ are you children of God. Um, not naturally. And so you think that just by being born in this world, that's a demonstration that we are literally the offspring of Heavenly Father and Heavenly Mother, uh, one of uh, his many heavenly mothers, his heavenly wives, because God is a polygamist, of course, in Mormonism, um, which y'all didn't mention in that other video. But anyway, um, and so uh, if children, if you go back in Romans 8, and trace that back, that children part is not pre-existent children of a heavenly father. That is being adopted in the family of God by faith and repentance in Jesus Christ, having been a child of wrath, having been one who was opposed to God, and then being converted by the gospel. That's what is in Romans 8. Yeah, and if children, then heirs and heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ. And if so be that we suffer with him, that we may be also glorified together. So, not that we're going to, you know, be exactly who the Savior was, but it's saying here that we're going to be a joint heir in the kingdom of God, mm -hmm. that will be like him one day. And that, that means you are going to be a perfected human being, not a God. The chasm, the ontological chasm that exists between the eternal, unchanging God and what he has made always remains. He graciously reveals himself. He graciously uh, conforms us to the image of whom? His son who entered into human flesh, the God-man. As I said on Apologia Radio yesterday, the gospel is not that men can become gods. The gospel is that God became a man in the person of Christ Jesus. One unique event, not billions and billions and unlimited going the other direction, which is what you have in Mormonism. That is so beautiful to me. And it also instills lots of purpose within me. What we're worried about is, we're not worried about, but what, what we worship is the fact that God gave us life. God gave yes. us an earth. God gave us a savior by which yeah. we can be redeemed. Mm -hmm. That's why we worship God. Yes. So. He is our... Actually, we worship God first and foremost because he's God and we're not. That's one of the things that I said on, and you may have found it to be somewhat um, offensive maybe, but I don't believe you have a God. If you believe what I read from Achieving a Celestial Marriage, that we are God's an embryo, that God, men and angels are all the same species, you don't have a God to worship. You've got a Superman, you've got a highly exalted um, man, but it's all man. And that comes out in your own words when you say that God's purpose is to bring about the exaltation, eternal life of man. When you have a God, then the things you talked about in regards to worship and things like that, I can understand why worship doesn't make any sense to you because he's just he's an exalted man. may have been very nice to you, but uh, you know, if, if Bill Gates came down and gave you a couple billion dollars, you might be really nice to him too, but he's still just a man. You don't have the transcendent God who is worthy of worship in and of himself, even if he didn't do anything else for you than to bring you into existence, according to Romans chapter one, that's enough to honor him as God and give thanks to him. I know you have no foundation for that because you believe the Book of Mormon doctrine covers the price. And it's not even the Book of Mormon, but the vast majority of this doctrine, as you well know, is not in the Book of Mormon. Joseph Smith did not believe the things that you believe when he wrote the Book of Mormon. It is very evolutionary in its uh, in development. Creator, he is who we look to for guidance. He gives us blessings. He's provided the word made flesh, Jesus Christ on earth, to teach us. We worship God because he is, there, there's no words, there's not enough words. We will to forever be indebted to him. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, 
We are nothing without God. I, I would, I'd like... Now, we actually played part of this yesterday. We are nothing without God. Now, let's, let's think this through within Mormonism. Um, God was once a man, lived on another planet. So, would he have once said, I am nothing without a different God? And in that previous video, they likewise had talked about how they will always look up to God the Father. Hmm. Okay. So, does God the Father continue to look up to his Father before him, and then his Father before him, and back into that eternal regression that is uh, so incoherent in LDS theology? Uh, inquiring minds want to know. Uh, it is a major, major problem. With my personal opinion on certain verses that talk about um, there not being any gods before God or after idolatry. Because, yes, because yeah. you know there was a big issue in the ancient times. Honestly, a big issue today yeah. of people worshiping oh, gods and and you know worshiping gods doesn't always mean like you're praying to a statue. Sometimes we worship these kind of gods. You know what I mean? Like we're worshiping things, and and we not we may not say we're worshiping, but we're giving enough attention and, and yeah. having so much faith in and, and looking towards man-made objects. It becomes this bizarre form of modern idolatry. Right. Um, but I believe that the verses that speak about that are, are pertaining to, let's say, it just got really quiet in here. Oh, I feel like it's, it's really been quiet the whole time. Has it? Okay, maybe yeah. just my voice is so loud and echoes. Um, the verses that speak about there not being any gods before or after are true because the scriptures pertain to our world and, and you know, the first dispensation to the last. Right. So all the knowledge we have in the scriptures pertain to the world we live in from its beginning to now. Okay, so so this is the standard Mormon way to get around the fact that the Bible directly contradicts the claims of Joseph Smith. Well, we need to limit what the Bible's saying to, to just this world, see. Well, or maybe just this universe, because maybe there's other universes. We don't really know. But actually, we say that Jesus was a God and the Holy Spirit is a God. So we actually have three gods, but but there's only one God for this world because the Bible says there is only one because Isaiah 43 didn't, before me there was no God formed and there will be none after me um, but what was really being said was before me um, there was no God formed for this world or this universe and there will be none formed after me for this world or this universe um, or just for Kolob uh, or, or whatever this is not what Isaiah was talking about, or Jeremiah was talking about, or anyone in the scriptures had any concept of any of this. And you just have to believe that, well, you know, as long as Joseph Smith said it, and yet Joseph Smith was as ignorant as the day is long of the content of scripture. He made so many errors in what he said about the original languages. He didn't even know the original languages. He pretended to, but just check out the book of Abraham sometime and you'll get a really good idea of just how good he was in original languages. But as I pointed out in responding to this on Apologia yesterday, if your God, according to Jeremiah chapter 10, if your God did not create the heavens and the earth, your God will vanish, will perish from under the heavens and from the earth. And your God didn't. Your God organizes. You guys use the word create. I think you need to be more careful about that. Um, because Joseph Smith was very, very careful to describe organization of pre-existing matter. That's not the same thing as creation. If you want to communicate with us anyways. Um, you know, maybe, maybe you don't. I don't know. But that's something.